Hello everyone, this is Eagle again. Hope you guys are doing great. And you really don't want to miss this video. Because if you do what I explained in this video correctly, you will have two or even three times more clicks to your items. And specifically what I'm going to show you in this video is how to create an image that will be irresistible to click on. So if we do a quick lookup, I want to show you an example of an item. You'll see exactly what I mean. Here's the item that I want to demonstrate with. So this is a kind of a slow cooker which uh, many dropshippers use to sell on eBay, some mildly successful, some really not so much. Uh, let's go ahead and search it on eBay and see what we see. Okay, search. And here you go. And it's not surprising to see that we have about a hundred instances of exactly the same picture. This one, the second one, third one, so on. Oh, this is a smart one. He made a little finger showing up here. A little collage, which is nice. It's already better than copying. Let's scroll down. And you see 90% of the images are exactly the same. You see here they did a 15 or 30 degree turn to the right so that eBay's algorithm would make it probably more uh, rank higher in the results. Okay, so that's what we see. Now how about if we could create an image that instead of looking just plain as everybody else's image would look something like that. Wouldn't it be cooler and wouldn't more people really want to click and see this because this is much more special? And the answer is yes, absolutely yes, because not only that eBay recognizes that you're using another image than the competition, also people will be captivated by the fact that it's an original image, you have a, a nice background, a title and some other things, and it's all styled really, really nicely. And the great news is that I am going to show you exactly how to create an image like that. Now before we do, I want to show you quickly eBay's picture policy. So you'll know what's allowed and what's not allowed. So here it is, picture policy, you can read that. And then there's the do's and don'ts, allowed, not allowed. So allowed include a large clear photo include pictures of any flaws that uh, so buyers could see and because we're selling new stuff then it's irrelevant for us now regarding not allowed let's scroll and see so there's including photos that don't actually represent, represent the item that's okay with us placeholder images it's like if your item is out of stock you put another image that's irrelevant Stock photos for used, damaged, or defective items. Again, ours are new. Adding borders to your photos, we won't do that. A picture that is less than 500 pixels, that's okay because our pictures are higher quality. Now, adding additional text, artwork, or marketing to photos, this one is kind of in the gray area because if we use the example that I showed you, then yes, we have some text here. However, there are a couple of things with that. First of all, we don't put this text on the image itself of the item. So it's not obscured by text. And secondly, it really might look like an ad or like the packaging maybe. So it's something that will add maybe even more value to the customer. So they'll know, oh, this is a slow cooker. This is a Hamilton Beach one. So this is good. And I can tell you in uh, general terms that after doing hundreds at least of pictures like that, eBay never removed any one that I did. So it's okay if you put text, just you know, don't obstruct the image, don't put a text that is incorrect or is tricking people to think that uh, this is not the actual item or if your item is six court then you put eight court in the images. So obviously you know uh, not to do that. Uh, watermarks of any type, 
again, this is a gray area because I used to use watermarks on my images and it was never a problem and never had my images removed. So how do we create a nice, beautiful image like I showed you a second ago? We use two tools. The first one is a tool that will help us remove the white background because as you can see here, there's this background and also there's this kind of shadow underneath that makes it look as if it's um, on a glossy uh, table. So we have to somehow remove those so we could replace. For that, we'll use a site called photoscissors.com. This is a free service that you can use right now. You don't have to subscribe or anything. And what we're going to do is upload an image. In our case, it's this image that I already downloaded. And click Open. This shows you the guidelines of how to use it. You're lucky because I will explain it all to you, so you don't have to read it. What you have to do is use the plus and minus signs here to give the program a sense of what you want to be included and excluded. Obviously what I want included is the item itself, so I'll mark it in green. Uh, please don't use it to run up to the edges, it's okay because the program itself will know that. Okay, so you can see I left some space here, I can I even do it a bit higher. And then I want to also include the handlebars. Before I do that, let's do a quick check if the program gets the idea of what I want to show. All right. And you see you have these yellow lines here that show what the program will include in the final image. So here you see gradually I'm getting a more and more accurate representation. Okay, so I included the green thing and this is the red thing that excludes stuff. Also pay attention that if you see here on the right side we even have the handle uh, with the, the feeling of the white removed, which is good. We want to do that on that side too. And to make it more clear and easy for me to see what I'm doing, I'll click here, which says background, and then change it to a solid color. The solid color I'll use is something that's not white. Let's say this one. And here you can see much clearer what I removed and what is still here. Let's enlarge and scroll it to that side. Even enlarge more so I could make it even better. Excellent. So this is exactly what we wanted to do. Same thing with the lower part of the image. Here we go. So we do not want this part here. even more. Excellent. You see how easy it is? You don't have to really have any experience with uh, image editing or photo editing. Oops, that's a bit too much. Okay, so we can decide how much time we want to play with that until we say it's okay for us. But for now, for the demonstration purposes of this video, this will be enough. Actually, you know what, I'll take a little bit of this left side because it's standing out a bit. So let's do like that. Okay, good enough for me. 
So overall the image is looking pretty nice. Remember that we'll not use the enlarged photos and see the edges on the, every pixel here. People will usually see it in the gallery image, so they will not really see the details here as much as we do when we enlarge. The next part is to create a shadow. Here we go, this makes it nicer, and I'll remove the background. Perfect, so as you can see, on the right side we have this image with the white background removed. And the great thing about this is that now we can use that image and put any background that we, can, that we want to choose behind it. So let's save this image. Let's call it Hamilton. Hamilton test. And now to the second part. We're now going to Canva, which is a website that I already mentioned in previous videos. But if you don't know about it, I highly suggest you to sign up. It's completely free. And it's a website that gives you the ability to do some really beautiful images and graphical designs without any prior knowledge needed, really. So I'll create a new design. Let's say Instagram post. The most important thing is that the height and the length would be the same. Okay, we have this here. And now I will select a background. Let's select this one, for example. As you can see, this is a beach and we're using the item which is called Hamilton Beach Slow Cooker. So it kind of relates one to another. So here's the beach and the photo. I already uploaded it right here. So I can just click and this will appear here. Now it's already looking really nice because you see there's no background. If you would use the original image, you would have this kind of white square background, which is obscuring the background that we have here, which is much nicer. And that way we can manipulate the image and make it much more beautiful and capturing the eyes of buyers. So here I'm enlarging it a bit. Put it in the center. It's already looking much better and I want to add some text. I can either use my own text and manually change the font or I can use some templates that they already have here. So let's say I want to take this one. So I just clicked on it. Then here. I want to create a matching color. I would say this one is good or that one even. And we can call it slow cooker or pressure cooker. Slow cooker by Hamilton Beach. Perfect. Let's enlarge it a bit. So look what we've got here. We created a really nice image that is much better and more captivating to the eye than anything you'll see in the search results as of now. Here, like compare this image here. Let's enlarge it. It's actually the same image as in Amazon, but imagine that you would use instead of this image, the one we just created. Which one do you think will buyers notice more? Which one would they click more? And which one do you think eBay will recognize as something more original and rank it higher? The answer is obviously this one. And not only that, but from my experience, when I do this correctly, I would usually get two to three times more clicks to my listings. And obviously, the more clicks, the more sales. 
So this is it. The only thing that you have to do now is just to download it as a PNG or a JPEG and upload this to your current existing listing. And be prepared to receive a bunch of additional orders to your existing item because that's really what's going to happen. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.